Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encuentra la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. I'm your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my very favorite vacation destination in the entire world. Maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're just listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and those of you who have listened to my podcast know that Alberto Perez is the owner of the Lapa Lapa Group of Restaurants. And Lapa Lapa and the El Dorado Restaurant are located on the south side of town, right down on the beach in Puerto Vallarta. Now, Lapa Lapa is one of Vallarta's oldest and most loved restaurants with that toes-in-the-sand experience right at the water's edge. So, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it's a great location. And a great time awaits you, too. It's just so romantic. It's, it's so Puerto Vallarta. Well, if you haven't been down there yet, Take my advice and get yourselves down here. The people of Vallarta await you with open arms. Take my word for it, friends. Now, this week, I have a real treat for you guys. But before I get to the show, let's see what's happening in Puerto Vallarta this week, the 16th of April, 2017. Today is Easter, and Easter in Mexico is a two-week holiday. It consists of... Semana, uh, Semana Santa, which is the Holy Week, and that begins on Palm Sunday, and it ends on Easter Saturday. And then Pasqua, that starts with Easter Sunday, and it ends the following Saturday. Now, believe it or not, because, look, the holiday calendar is just really long and really frequent here in Mexico, and Semana Santa is, without a doubt, the most important holiday in the Mexican culture, really. Many families, many Mexican families, they go on holiday during Semana Santa and Pascua. And of course, why not? I mean, we do too. We all go out on Easter break. They do the same. And so if you plan on popping into Puerto Vallarta during this time of year, you're going to have some trouble squeezing into a room. So just be aware of that. Anyway, all around Mexico... Mexicans celebrate the last days of Christ during the Holy Week with elaborate processions, ceremonies, and rituals. Most of the larger Semana Santa celebrations include a dramatic reenactment of the capture, the trial, and the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, Mexicans are known for practicing unique traditions during Semana Santa, such as acts of mm, physical torture, uh, public displays of political social ridicule, uh, even displays of resolutions and commitment. Now, in some of the more devout regions of Mexico, like in Tasco and oh, like uh, Allende, the reenactments include uh, penitences, men and women who show their penitence and prove their faith by inflicting physical pain. Now, many of us have seen these reenactments before. We've seen them on oh, all different kinds of newsreels. It's very interesting, but hey, listen, to each his own. There's lots of parades and processions. It's actually very, very cool. Now, just be ready for the crowds. In fact, the reports that I'm getting and the pictures that I'm seeing of the crowds at the beaches, well, they're all pointing towards record numbers of visitors this Easter, this Semana Santa. Now, traffic was backed up for miles on the road coming into Vallarta on Friday. And also this week, um, there's actually a new highway connection from Guadalajara that connects Puerto Vallarta to Guadalajara. Now, it was supposed to have its grand opening. I think it did. 
But this highway is going to shorten the time that it takes to travel by road from Puerto Vallarta to Guadalajara, from where we are at now at five hours to about two and a half hours. So it's going to cut that time in half. Now, that's a big deal for travelers who would like to maybe make Guadalajara part of their stay in Puerto Vallarta. You can actually make a day trip out of it. So, you know, it's actually pretty cool. Now, they're still slaving away at the airport. One day, real soon, it's going to be complete. And I'm going to update all of my photos if they become unusable, of course. So, well, we'll just see. Now, for more information on what to expect when you arrive at the Puerto Vallarta airport, packing tips, cell phone plans, all kinds of tips, and more, you need to listen to episode two and three of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show, where we talk about all those important items and more. So, listen to the podcasts or read my show notes to those shows. I'm also thinking of doing a meetup for the middle of May in Puerto Vallarta. Now, I'll bring my microphones, and we can hear from you listeners about what you're up to in paradise. Now, if you're interested, send me an email by clicking on the Contact Us tab at the top of the page, and, well, let's see if we get some interest. I'm going to be there from the 7th through the 16th of May, so let's see what we can do. I'll get JR in on this, and maybe we'll all meet up. Okay, let's get on with the show. Now, we're coming upon the month of May, and here in Puerto Vallarta, that means Restaurant Week. And uh, so the next couple of shows, we're going to be concentrating on food in Puerto Vallarta. And today, we're going to be talking with Carmen Porras, uh, the co-owner of El Arian Restaurant in Puerto Vallarta. And she's going to tell us about their menu and about her great cooking classes that she gives. So we're going to be talking with Carmen in just a few minutes. It's been a little while since we've heard from JR, so let's bring him on to talk a little about some tours that you all can take by yourselves without the help of a tour guide or even a tour company. So let's zip on over to Puerto Vallarta and join JR. All right, well, and we are here today. Uh, I am in beautiful, sunny Southern California, and JR is in beautiful, sunny. Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. JR, thanks for coming on with me today. Great to hear from you, Barry. Hey, uh, you know, this week, uh, it act, we saw the end of an era in Puerto Vallarta with the passing of a longtime resident, uh, Howard McGill. And Howard was the husband of Jenny McGill, who was an employee for the U.S. Consular's Office in Puerto Vallarta from 1982 to 1996. Now, the consular's office, that's under the auspices of the State Department and the United States Embassy. And, and she wrote a book titled Drama and Diplomacy in Sultry Puerto Vallarta. You knew Jenny, didn't you, uh, J.R.? Oh, yes. Well, I lived, <clears throat> I lived half a block away from her on, on uh, uh, Zaragoza, um, where the, the so-called Love Bridge, Elizabeth and Dick's house, um, and so I, I, I remember bumping into her one day. Actually, I went to visit her for some other reason. We got to talking, and she was a hell of a character. I mean, she was a Texas girl, and and mm. she didn't mess around. You know, she 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 called it straight. Yeah. Um, and she told me a story about how this this girl wanted to uh, charge a taxi driver with assault. Um. And so Jenny said, well, come up to the house and we'll go to the department that we have to go to to make a police report. Mm -hmm. Girl comes to the door. She's wearing a very loose top, no bra, and she was quite well endowed. And Jenny <laughs> said, listen, go right now back home and change. You are not going to make a police report looking like that. Uh, and she uh, said to me after, she said, you know, a any taxi driver picks up a girl coming out of a club at 3 a.m. in the morning, drunk on her ass, dressed like that. To him, that's a whore. Looks like a whore, must be a whore. Yeah. So, you know, she was available. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, yeah, she figured that she could not protect this girl dressed like that, could she? Well, I mean, it wouldn't have made a very good impression. Well, uh, now you, did you know Howard? 
Well, Howard, I only actually met Howard once at a poker game uh, with John Houston. Um, oh. Let me see who, uh, Tootie's uh, husband, uh, Tom Compatella, and a couple of other guys, old, Oh, I, I can't remember their names now. It's a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom was a professional backgammon player and a very good poker player. Um, Howard was pretty good. I didn't think John Houston was very good, but he but he had the money. So you know, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes in poker, if you got the money, you can you can swing things. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, so this book, by the way. If you are, if you are any kind of Puerto Vallarta freak like I am, you need to get the book. And once you're done with it, you need to share it with others. It's she talks about, oh, you know, in the '80s, of course, there were crazy. It was crazy times, right, John? <laughs> I mean, it was yes. it was nutty down. We think that it's crazy now, but in the '80s, it was crazy. It was far crazier in the 80s. It's really subdued now by comparison. Of course, there wasn't so many people here, but the percentage of crazy ones was much higher. Yeah, and, you know, of course, her job at the uh, consulate office was basically to, she helped U.S. citizens that were in trouble or that were dead and needed to be repatriated or that were dying and needed to have some help from home. Um, She talks about, Every time she runs into some crazy person, it's always someone that's naked, you know, wandering the streets. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's got some great stories in that book. Oh, yeah. A drama and diplomacy, correct? Yes, yes. Drama and diplomacy in Sultry Puerto Vallarta. You guys, it's available yeah, through hilarious. Amazon. Yeah. Uh, $18 hilarious, US. Hilarious, hilarious. Yeah, it's it's great. It's uh, it's It's a great read. Unfortunately, it's not a long book. So, uh, you know, you can, you can read it in an afternoon and then when you're done, you go, oh, come on. She must've had more stories and she probably did, but, uh, she, she changed the names of several characters in the book, uh, but I knew them. (laughs) So it was easy for me to know who she was talking about. That's pretty That's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyhow, um, uh, you happen to have, I noticed a, a new page on your website on viartainfo.com and do it yourself page a diy page right so why don't you uh, give us a little tour of your diy page okay i mean the main concept on the do it yourself page it's the do it yourself tour page right 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 um there's several tours you can do you can do that you don't need a tour company uh you can get to the locations on public transport and a couple might have an entrance fee, like the botanical gardens and the zoo. Mm-hmm. But but you can get to them very easily on a bus for eight pesos or twelve pesos, or you know, a well, botanical garden. I think is uh, twenty eight pesos yeah, now. Twenty eight. But right. that's but that's a long way. And then beyond the botanical gardens, um, I think it's one hundred and fifty pesos entrance on that. Um, yeah. Kids under a certain age are free. Uh, it's like it's like five dollars. It's like five dollars. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's it's wonderful place. Wonderful, really incredible. Uh, then, if you go beyond that, you can go to El Tuito, which is uh, the town further down the road, uh, which is much older than Puerto Vallarta. I mean, it was built in colonial times because the road then was called the Camino Real. Mm-hmm. And it was basically halfway between Barra de Navidad and the mining uh, areas. Okay, so and it's it was inland. a flat. It was a flat valley. It had grazing. It had water. Perfect. So El Tuito is how far from the botanical gardens? Uh, about another twenty minutes on the bus. Okay, and what can you what what can you do when you get there? What 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 are the things? What are the In main El attractions? Trito? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the main square is surrounded by uh, buildings that are all uh, adobe, you know, with oh. walls about three three feet thick. Um, very nice and uh, cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Uh-huh. 
uh, the municipal building, the town hall. In the town hall, there's a great mural with all these historical characters uh, involved with Mexico and locally in the Cabo Corrientes area. Uh, El Tuito is the uh, the center town in the municipality of Ca uh, Cabo Corrientes, which is the municipality south of Puerto Vallarta. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. There, there's also a church which has an altar which is actually a large rock. Um, the story is that the rock was there and they built the church around it. Uh, there's also places you can get the local famous panela cheese. Uh, it, there's not an awful lot to do there. It's really quiet. Yeah. But uh, there are places to eat, yes? There's little restaurants? Oh, or... yes. Yes, there's some good restaurants there. Oh, Definitely okay. some decent restaurants. Good. All right. Because okay. you know, that's, that's, so, that's all that we're really interested in, John, is eating. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, drinking, anyhow, to you know. continue. Yeah. Um, all right. On, on the south coast, there's a couple of places that you can't get to by road because of the mountains. Mm -hmm. um, Las Animas Beach and Yalapa uh, are two places on the south coast further past Boca de Tomatlan, where the road goes inland. So from Boca de Tomatlan, you can get a water taxi, 70 pesos to Las Animas, 90 pesos to Yalapa. The bus to Boca is 8 pesos, so add it up. It's not a, not a big amount of money, and it doesn't cost you to enter anything. Right. Now plenty of restaurants on the, yeah, plenty of restaurants on the beach. Uh, in Yalapa, there's also uh, the village to explore, and maybe not this time of year, but there, there's a waterfall behind the village, which is quite high, but not very, uh, not with a great volume. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, since there's uh, some time since the rain stopped uh, last, last November, may not be a lot of water there, but it, yeah. it's a nice place to hang out for the day. And very economical. So the Las Animas um, boat, you're going to catch that where? Are you going to catch that in town or are you going to catch that at Boca de Tomatlan? Well, you can catch it in town. Uh, but my advice would be to go to Boca de, de Tomatlan on the bus and sit on the right-hand side of the bus and enjoy the wonderful view that you wouldn't get from a taxi because they're too low down. Mm, yeah, right. Um, and get that great view, and it's a lot cheaper as well. Okay, uh, you can go to both places from Los Muertos Beach, um, uh, from the pier there as well. But that's going to cost you a whole lot more as far uh, as um, taking that launch, right? Yeah, so. I, th yeah I think it'll up as 180. 180 pesos, so that's about $9 US, maybe $10 right, as US. as opposed to... As opposed to 90 plus 8, 98 pesos. Right. And so that's, you know, I, I like your idea of taking the bus. The bus is very, um, it's campy. It's a lot of fun. It, that, that ride is, is beautiful. But of course, so, so is the ride on the water. So, I mean, you know, it's a flip of a coin, isn't it? Yeah, I, I prefer the bus and the short ride on the water. Okay, good. All right, so that's Yalapa and Las Animas, and those are both accessible by sea. And right, so and then on your way to Boca, you will pass uh, Miss Maloya, uh, you know, the famous for where the Night of the Iguana was shot. Mm -hmm. And in Miss Maloya, there's a zoo, uh, which a lot of people really like because it's quite extraordinary. You get really personal contact with the animals uh, you're not separated by bars and, and glass and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Neat. Yeah, I've heard about it, and I know that it's a great place to take kids. Yeah, so you take the bus to Ms. Maloya, then it's about, oh, um, half a kilometer hike up, up the hill, but uh, there's taxis there that will take you up there for 50 paces or something like that. Uh, they also have an entrance fee, not sure what it is right now. I'm still building that page. Okay. Uh, plus, you can buy food for the animals. Yeah, I saw that. That's plus neat. you can if yeah. Plus you can if they've got some some 
kittens of, of the wild cats, uh, lion, leopard, tiger kittens, uh, for a fee, you can play with them. Huh. <laughs> How fun is that? Um, all right, cool. So the zoo. Um, what else do you have here on your page? Oh, you have oh, El Pitiel. Yes, El Pitiel. El Pitiel was a small village outside of Puerto Vallarta when I first came here. Um, it has now become like a dormitory city for the people who work in Vallarta and is now part of the municipality of Puerto Vallarta as well. Huh. But easily reached by the bus, uh, almost devoid of tourists. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a snap to get there, you know. I mean, any bus that has Pitial on the front will take you there for seven and a half pesos. That's a deal. Get off, get off at the plaza, go into the church, see the incredible carving of uh, Jesus, uh, I presume meant to be an ascension, uh, which is back lit behind the altar. is quite extraordinary looking. Uh, lots of interesting stores and restaurants and places to eat around. Uh, and as I said, nearly a tourist to see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that church, it, that's like right in the middle of the town center. It's, it's kind of like built just like most uh, Mexican towns. Yeah. Yeah, like most towns, right next to the square. Mm -hmm. Okay. The plaza, uh, which uh, usually is called the Plaza de Armas, and the church, usually right next to each other. Yeah, exactly. Wow, okay. So, um, and then I was talking, actually, uh, last week, I was talking to somebody who lives over, over in El Pitiel, and I said, so tell me about the great places to eat there. And he said, hmm, and he couldn't think of any. Uh I don't know. Oh, no, there is. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, there's the Mataraya, uh, which uh, used to be called uh, Tino's. Uh, they moved into town by Hidalgo um, Park. Yeah. Uh, and the other place closed down, but then they reopened the, the old place in Pitial and renamed it Mataraya. Um, Mataraya Manta in Pitial, okay. And what do they serve yeah. there? Uh, seafood. Nice. Any other places you can think of over there? Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, I don't go there very often. But I, I got good friends who live there. Yeah. All right. Well, that's great. Your DIY, the your DIY page is looking good. Um, but you know, you have tours that are associated with probably each and every one of those too, don't you? There that are on your page as well. Or not on that one, but you know, on your site. Uh, or are those most no, those are not, mostly not, like well, bus rides? Well, I mean, I've stuff. got lots of tours, but the do-it-yourself tours um, don't require a tour operator, and so I I don't book them or uh, do anything other than give the information on how to do it yourself. Okay, well, isn't that nice of you? All right, well, good. So this is great information for you guys. It's uh, free. It's on the website at viarteinfo dot com, but you can also find uh, tours that you can't do by yourself on viartainfo.com and we'll go over the couple of those uh, those tours at another date, if that's okay with you, JR? You bet. All right. Well, very cool. Well, thanks for coming on with me today. We'll talk with you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, then. Well, just go, as I said, to viartainfo.com and check out JR's new DIY tours page. It's really good for him to put that out. Let's take a little bit advantage of it. So you can actually follow that uh, link on my show notes to this episode. Now, El Ariane Restaurant. It was the last day of my Puerto Vallarta stay, and I had made arrangements to meet Carmen Porras, the co-owner of El Ariane Restaurant. I was going to meet her at the restaurant about 30 minutes before her class. And that day she was teaching a tamale uh, making class. And my plan was to get the interview and stay to tape portions of her cooking class. Now, El Arian is located in a real Mexican neighborhood. It's about five blocks up from the Malacan. 
Now, if you're using the Malacan as a reference, uh, it's where Calle Allende ends at the Malacan. Um, and there's a restaurant called La Bodeguita de Medio. La Bodeguita de Medio. And then right across from there, there's the Jazz Foundation. So that would be your point of reference at the Malacan. Anyway, that's where you would start if you were walking. And you would walk up to, to El Arian, about five blocks, kind of uphill. It's not a big hill, but it's gradual. Um, you could always take a cab. It's not a big deal. Now, this morning, uh, this particular morning, I was pretty hungry. I was coming from my apartment in El Cerro, and I walked down Matamoros to Allende. And, by the way, on the corner of Matamoros and Allende, on Matamoros is the most amazing taco stand. Now, Tacos de Ber, Ber, uh, Biera, Alex. So this is uh, uh, goat tacos. And this place is always, always, always busy, day and night. And it smells so good when you walk up there and just walk past it. Anyway, I got this great tip from my buddy David Ostlin uh, from Chef's Pass Food Tours. I have uh, I have him on one of my episodes. You want, might want to try that out. And uh, he said, "This is it. This is the this is a great taco stand." So just be aware. You can uh, sit on the curb there and munch away just like the locals do. Now, anyway, getting back to breakfast, I was looking for a quick bite, and I stopped into a little restaurant called El Gran Ol- Olivo which El Gran Olivo means like the big olive. And so anyway, uh, I walk in. It was kind of a little hole in the wall, cute little hole in the wall place. I was the only customer, so I scanned the place. I picked a seat, and I was immediately served, uh, given a menu. And um, I found what I was looking for, chicken chilquedas, because that's what I like. And I ordered that along with a glass of fresh squeezed orange juice. Now, there was just one problem, and that was that they had no chicken. Now, before I could change my order, the waitress was out the door, and she was off to buy some chicken. Now, I was getting a little worried because I had, I had an interview, okay? I, I didn't want to be late, uh, but luckily, she, she reappeared just minutes later with some chicken breast for the cook, and... At that point, my anxiety level dropped down to almost normal. Uh, The food was absolutely delicious. Um, It was beautiful, too. Uh, I have a picture of the plate of chilaquiles, and I'll put it on the post in the show notes for this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show, episode 15. Uh, Embarrassingly enough, the bill came to about 45 pesos. It was like like two and a half dollars. I was floored. Wow, it was so good. Anyway, my tummy was full, so I walked back up Allende uh, to El Arian. Now, the front of the restaurant looks like a pink hacienda. It's a stark contrast from the other buildings that surround it in this very traditional Mexican neighborhood. Now, as you open this large, heavy front wooden door, you walk right into a courtyard setting. It's open air with trees growing in the, with a tree actually growing in the center. And um, anyway, it's wonder, it's wonderfully described by my friend Constance from Canada. And she was kind enough to let me borrow and read from her TripAdvisor review of El Arian. So here goes. For our last dinner in Puerto Vallarta, I wanted to have Cochina Authentica Mexicana. I was not worried about having a panoramic ocean view, as both the condos that I stayed in had very special bay views. I decided El Arian had the credits and the reviews that promised a wonderful evening. I made reservations and asked to be seated in the garden. When we arrived at the restaurant, we were seated at a sweet little table, just for two, under the Arian tree in the center of the courtyard. It really felt like a special date night. I ordered a liquid appetizer, a tangerine mezcalita, made with 100% agave mezcal from Oaxaca. Lovely and tart. And for dinner, I ordered the duck carnitas, 
specialty of the house. It's a third of a duck in one piece, slowly cooked, guajillo orange arian sauce with sautéed potatoes, zucchini, and carrots. My meal was perfectly cooked. The flavors were f- delightful. The only one fault was the potatoes were oversalted. My husband ordered the beef barbacoa. It's steamed beef cooked in avocado leaf, plantain leaf, and thyme, served with nopal cactus salad and borracha salsa. Although he enjoyed his meal, he said that next time we go to El Arian, he would order the duck carnitas as well. And he, she says the service was impeccable. At this lovely restaurant, we both agreed that El Arian was the perfect place to enjoy our last evening in Puerto Vallarta. Well, isn't she a great writer? Now, last time I was in town, I had dinner with her and her husband at Layla's, uh, another great place to eat right near the ocean on Calle Venezuela in the 5th of December neighborhood. So, Constance knows her good food, that's for sure. So, thank you, Constance, for letting me share your review with my listeners. So, Without any further ado, let's get to the interview with Carmen Porras of El Arian Restaurant in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Today, I am with Carmen Porras. She is the owner of El Arian Restaurant here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Carmen, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Barry. Great having you here. Thank you. Uh, Carmen, this is such a beautiful space that you made here. I mean, the place looks so welcoming. It's just so nice, and it's open, and you've done a really good job here. Um, When did you open El Arian, and what does El Arian actually mean in English? El Arian, we opened in 2003, the restaurant, Um, my partner and me, Claudia and me. And uh, the name stems from a species of tree that that grows in... uh, Mexico, specifically in our region of Puerto Vallarta. All right. Well, that's that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Carmen, h- how long have you been in Puerto Vallarta? Uh, we opened in 2003, and I arrived in Puerto Vallarta in the year 2000. So tell us a little bit about your restaurant. What's, what's the concept here? It's all traditional Mexican food uh, with our twist, and we try to stick to traditional procedures and ingredients and flavors of, on Mexican food from different regions. So it's not a specific region. We borrow from different states and different uh, um, traditions in states, and we try to reproduce those uh, recipes. Very good. And, um, well, I'm looking here. You look at TripAd- TripAdvisor, you know, that nasty little thing that we, we love and hate. And you're you're in the top twenty of almost like seven hundred restaurants here in Puerto Vallarta. I mean that's that's an incredible achievement. Uh, now, TripAdvisor, of course, says that there there are approximately seven hundred restaurants here. So that obviously means that there's lots of competition. It's probably pretty fierce. So, how do you, after all those years, you continue to be such a powerhouse? How do you continue to be such a favorite of visitors here in Puerto Vallarta? Hey. Uh, so much as a powerhouse, uh, we don't <laughs> like to think of ourselves of that. But uh, the team does a great, great job uh, cooking every single dish. We try our best with every single table, and um, we stick to it and have our standards of quality. Of course, you know, as you said, trip advisor can be uh, tricky. <laughs> yes, it can. Trick advisor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like these names. I like it. So, um, of course, we're not perfect. The team really, really tries to make it an enjoyable experience so people can recommend us and maybe come back and recommend us to family and friends. And that's what we look for. We just want happy customers and we're human. <laughs> we don't ha- we're not perfect. Right. And uh, sometimes it doesn't work, <laughs> you know. But if you give us a chance, uh, it usually works, and people leave very happy. And we're very, very fortunate to have a lot of return customers. Absolutely, that is true. And um, you know, I, I totally get it. I I know that you can't be it can't be on every time, and people are really picky. And sometimes people come in and they they're just looking to pick a fight. So I get it. I get it, Carmen. Most people come here with a great attitude, and and that's why we're trying to to 
play with, right? The good attitude in our waiters and the kitchen staff so that the 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 customers have also, you know, a positive experience. <laughs> Correct. And how can you not have a positive experience sitting in this beautiful restaurant? It's so nice. So hmm, you have a you have a cooking class and I'm very interested in that. So please tell us a little bit about that class that you teach and what should a person taking that class expect? So our cooking class, we've been teaching the cooking classes for over 10 years now. Oh. I started with one of the chefs that was working here with us, and we try to stick to recipes that people can replicate when they go back to Canada or the States with ingredients that are easily available over there right. in many cities. So we've been doing staple Mexican food. Um, since three years ago, we've been... Um, Offering the cooking classes Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Okay. And then Mondays, we uh, teach mole, uh -huh. different kinds of moles. Neat. Then Thursdays, some uh, classical Mexican dishes, and uh, Saturdays, tamales. Oh, okay. So you break it up. You've got like you got lessons yeah. <laughs> on all kinds of stuff. Yes. That's very we smart. We have over over. 50 recipes that we teach. Uh, we always teach an appetizer, main course, dessert, and a fresh salsa. Great. So this is something that people, when they come to Puerto Vallarta, they can take a little time, learn how to cook Mexican style, and as a result, you're going to end up having, um, you're going to be able to bring home a Puerto, Puerto Vallarta with you and share it with your family and friends. Exactly. exactly. Uh, we also print out the recipes in English and give the um, students an embroidered apron. Oh, nice. They get to stay for lunch. And the class on Monday includes a breakfast and a tour to the market to see the purveyors and uh, the products that we're going to use in that class. Great. Cool. So you actually take them to the market? Yes. <laughs> uh, is that like herding cats? Is no, it, no, it's a, it's to show people some of the local produce and the local cheese and some fresh peppers, dried peppers, and talk about ingredients that we might be using that day specifically. Excellent. Tell me a little bit about your menu here at El Arian. Um, what are the favorites of people when they come here? What a I mean, what 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 do most people like to eat around here? The specialty of the house is the duck carnitas. That's one of our main courses. Ooh, duck carnitas. That's duck carnitas. Technically, it's a duck confit. Okay. It's duck that is cooked in its own fat for about four hours. Uh -huh. So it's very tender and it loses that uh, so lining of delicious. the own fat. <laughs> fat <laughs> the, the duck fat that it has, you know, so uh -huh. it's very, very tender. Uh, we've also been serving the uh, ceviche colima, which is the baby scallop ceviche for a while. And the duck tostadas, the pickled duck tostadas. So those are very, very uh, popular. And also the plantain empanadas. Those yeah. are empanadas and the dough is made with plantain. Uh -huh. uh, all our menu right now is gluten-free. We oh, just cool. realized a few months ago that the whole menu was gluten-free. And now we're telling people about yeah, it. So and now, a lot now of folks are happy. Yeah, well, <laughs> everybody stands up uh, you know, on the hilltop saying, I have gluten-free food, so you might as well do it. I think a lot of people hadn't realized they had gluten-free uh, intolerance. They, they had, they had a, a, an intolerance to gluten. And some people are, are very happy to find out what it is, and they can control their diet a little bit more, and we're happy to help them. Yeah, cool. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, that's nice. Um. So, how does one go about signing up for your cooking class? The cooking class. Okay, so you go our, to our internet site. Mm -hmm. It's uh, El Arrayan, and you spell it E L A R R A Y A N mm -hmm. dot com dot mx. That's our internet site. Okay. It's in English and Spanish, so you click on English, and then you'll find uh, the the cooking classes if you scroll below. Okay. And you click on it, and it, the, all the reservation comes on the all the information comes there. And there's a little form that you can fill out so that I can send you more information and the payment form and everything. Great. So you're going to find that link to uh, to her site as well on this uh, on the, on the post that I put up here. And you're going to find that at PuertoVallartaTravelShow dot com. I will make sure that we have that so that people can reach you if they want to take the cooking class. But I, I want you to also go there and eat. I want you to go and have some have some dinner there. And, and uh, what are your hours here? Tell us how you fi how we find you. Uh, we're closed on Tuesdays. Okay, so don't, we're don't, open. don't show up on Tuesdays, you guys. <laughs> so we are open Wednesday to Monday from 5.30 to 11 p.m. Okay, and where are you located? 
We are on Allende Street, the number is 344. It's in El Centro. We're very close to the Malecon and the department store lands. Okay. Just up the hill from them. Good. All right. Well, you know where to find her now, everybody. Um, I'm going to stick around for this uh, cooking class. I, I, I would love to see what you do here. So, Carmen, I want to thank you for joining me. And please, um, once again, thank you again for, for taking the time and, and, and talking to my audience. Thank you very much. Gracias, Barry. <laughs> if you want to ask anything, please let me know, right? Uh, just stop me and I'll try to explain as much as I can. I'll try to make this class fun. We're gonna start with the tamales, making the proper masa for a tamal. And then we're gonna, while we're making the tamales, we're gonna start with the dessert. So, whatever we start doing, I'll be explaining, okay? And the tamales class is a very hands on class. So, everybody will get to make a few tamales. We're shooting for making about 30 tamales a bit. Okay? About. Wow. We'll see. Cuántas hojitas de. So, this is an easy way to make tamales. Traditionally, uh, you would have to beat the lard by hand on a kitchen surface. But if you have a mixer, it's much better. If you have a stand up mixer, it's much better too. Okay? So, um, we have the corn masa right there. Corn masa comes from uh, dried corn kernels, in this case white. And they go through a process which is called nixtamalización. And that's a process uh, that was named here in Mexico uh, because our ancestors discovered how to make corn uh, easier to eat. And then the, uh, the technology showed us that it makes it more and more nutritious, right? So the corn kernels are cooked at a certain temperature for a certain period of time. And uh, then they have the mineral, lime, that, that white powder they use in construction. And it makes a chemical reaction. And it makes the corn easier to grind. And it's ground uh, through stone, some machines that grind it through stone. And that's what you get. So there's no fat, there's no salt, it's whole grain. Uh, lots of fiber, the, that chemical reaction uh, enriches the grain uh, with uh, calcium, vitamin B, probiotics, lots of fiber. Uh, so if you get a chance to choose between wheat tortillas and corn tortillas, I always choose corn tortillas, right? Carmen was an amazing person, and she and her partner Claudia do such a wonderful job putting out the finest cooking in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. My sombrero's off to you, Carmen and Claudia. Now, visit El Arian and see for yourself for sure. I have all the, the links to El Arian in my show notes for this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show, so... Just go to www.portofayartotravelshow.com, or you can even shorten it by going to pvtravelshow.com to get the show notes and all the other great podcasts. There's a new episode every week, so stay tuned. Now, that should do it for this show. 
this particular week. Remember, I depend on your questions and suggestions all about everything Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, well, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartinfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour right through him, right from his website. Remember, it's a value-for-value proposition, my friends. It's experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you would make anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying, thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It costs you no more, really. And when you do take one of those tours, please email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And once again, if you like this podcast, subscribe and give me a good review on iTunes. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So... Thank you, Constance, for letting me share your review and with my listeners. And thank you, JR, for helping out this week. And especially thanks to Carmen Porras of El Arian Restaurant for talking with us all about that beautiful restaurant, you know, and your cool cooking classes. Check out her classes at www.elarian.com.mx. And thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Bird of Iron Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for all of you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Samba de Puerto Vallarta